If you're happy to be alive today, to be in the presence of God, praise the Lord. If you're happy to be in the will of God, in the plan, in the purpose and counsel of God, praise the Lord. This month is still the month of victory. Oh, God is going to give you total victory, complete victory, permanent victory in the name of Jesus. And we're still going to worship this God. Amen. We're going to worship him. Thank you, Father Lord. We are victorious. Yes, we are victorious. Glory be to God who has given us the victory. We are victorious. Yes, we are victorious. Glory be to God who has given us the victory. I don't know about you, but I know I'm victorious. I am victorious. Yes, I am victorious. Glory be to God who has given us the victory. Victory, we are victorious. Yes, we are victorious. Glory be to God who has given us the victory. I am victorious, I am victorious, yes, I am victorious, glory be to God, who has given me the victory, victory belongs to Jesus, victory belongs to him, victory belongs to Jesus. A victory belongs to him. A victory belongs to Jesus. A victory belongs to him. A victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. Who can stand? Who can stand against the Lord? No one can, and no one will. Who can stand? Who can stand against the king? And no one can, and no one will. Oh, oh, oh. Belongs to 
of victory. victory he belongs to you. He belongs to you. All the victory belongs. He belongs to you. Father, we want to give you praise. Because in you we have victory. It does not matter the battles of life. It does not matter the challenges of life. It does not matter what season we find ourselves. We have the promise of total, complete, and permanent victory. Be exalted, O God, in the name of Jesus. As we share in your word this morning, Lord, I ask for a visitation of healing for someone. I ask for a visitation of healing from someone. Receive your healing now. Send your word to a destiny today. Send your word to a life today. The word that will transform them and lift them from zero to hero in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I'm praying for someone. Let there be clarity. Oh, clarity of purpose. Clarity of vision. Clarity of direction. In the mighty name of Jesus. Speak through me, Lord. And let your people see you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. And amen. Amen. The Lord bless you, church. You can have your seats. I want to welcome every one of us to the presence of the Lord. If you're watching us online or you are physically with us here, I want to say you're welcome to the presence of the Lord. In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy, and at his right hands are what? Are pleasures forevermore. In this month of October, it's still the month of victory. And so I have good news for someone. Your victory is unstoppable. Amen. I say your victory is unstoppable. Amen. And the Lord also said for someone. You may not see it now. You may not feel it. It may not seem like it. But God said, I should tell you that I have destined you for greatness. Amen. I have destined you for greatness. Amen. And nothing will stop your greatness in life. Amen. You may not feel it. You may not see it. It may not seem as if it is going to happen. But God said, I should tell you because he has destined you for greatness, it will take you there. Amen. Thank you, Father Lord. Today we want to still continue talking about victory. It's still a month of all-round victory. And today I want to focus on the weapons of our warfare. Now talking about battles in life, talking about God giving us victory, there are certain things we need to know. That as Christians, as children of God, we are in a warfare. And you and I need to understand what are those weapons at our disposal. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so tell your neighbor the weapons, of your the weapons of your warfare. Do you have it? Do you have it? We're going to read the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10 from verse 1. To verse 6, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, from verse 1 to verse 6. Now I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in the presence am based among you, but being absent and bold towards you. But I beseech you, I beseech you, that I may not be bold when I'm present with that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walk according to the flesh. Verse 3 now says, For though we walk in what? 
in the flesh, we do not war, we do not contend, we do not battle after the flesh. Verse 4 says, for the weapons. Tell your neighbor again, you have a weapon. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Verse 5. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Verse 6, which will be the last one. And having in all readiness to revenge all disobedience, when your obedience is fulfilled. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. The weapons of our warfare. Praise the Lord. Now, brethren, in this scripture here, we are made to understand that Though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. Praise God. Now, what that means is that we are engaged in warfare. And we have weapons that we can use as children of God to do what? To fight the battle. Amen. And the scripture also made us to realize that Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 12. Ephesians 6 from verse 12. Our fight, our contention is not with flesh and blood. We are not contending against humans. It is not that your neighbor, it is not that woman in your village that you think it's a witch or a wizard that you are contending with. Praise God. We are not wrestling against the flesh, against the physical, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this world, and against what? Spiritual wickedness in high places. Beloved, I want us to understand that we are children of God, but we must not lose focus of the fact that this world is still full of the habitation of the wicked. And yes, we may assume that we're in Canada and everything looks rosy, everything looks okay, everything looks great. That's what the people in Jericho told the man of God, Elisha. As you can see, my Lord, the situation looks great, wonderful, but there is a problem. Praise the Lord. And so in order for every one of us to contend effectively, we need to understand who our enemy is. But much more, we need to understand that we have a weapon. We have certain weapons from the Lord. So let me state this fact clearly again. There is a war going on. Amen. There is what? There is a war going on. And this war is not a physical war. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8, uh, verse 18. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18. Apostle Paul, talking to Timothy here, he says, I am charging you, my son Timothy, according to the prophecy that went before you. He said, so that you may do what? So that you can contend, so that you can fight a good what? A good warfare. That means there are bad warfare. Praise God. I know there are some of us that love to fight battle, that love to contend. But you need to have an understanding of how to fight a good warfare. Praise God. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. As a soldier of Christ, the scripture says here, you must endure hardness. Now, when you have soldiers, soldiers are trained, correct? And they are giving guns to go and do what? And play? And hide? No, it's a serious battle. And it's a serious business. So, soldiers are not just trained for the fun of it. 
Thank God for all the nations of the world. And even though what we can see physically, talking about soldiers, it is not a child's play because the gun that they are carrying is a matter of life and death. But as children of God, as believers, we assume, we think that because we are Christians, I don't want trouble with anybody. I don't want to fight with anybody. No, the devil doesn't hear that. The only language the devil understands is violence. Amen. And so there is a war going on. We also need to understand that we have a weapon. Praise the Lord. The weapon that we are talking about, it is not a physical weapon. When the scripture says we need to put on the whole armor of God, if you go back to that Ephesians 6, you know, from verse 11. When the scripture says we need to put on the whole armor, why do you have to put on an armor? You put on an armor when you are going to what? To fight. You need to put on the whole armor of God. You cannot see a strong man that his own will be broken into. If you did not first of all do what? Bind that strong man. And that's when you cannot do whatever you want to do. You want to take authority over the enemy. You must be the strongest. Luke 11 verse 21 down to 22. When you want to take over a territory, a land... A domain, you must be the strongest. Praise God. And so, we need to first of all understand there is a battle going on. And we also have a weapon. Amen. And the Bible says, the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. Praise God. And so, what is going on? We have a weapon. Those weapons are mighty. Not through us, but through who? To the pulling down of strongholds. I don't know what stronghold is against you. But yes, brethren, the word stronghold is serious. Because when stronghold is against a life, I always still go back to the children of Israel. That spirit of Pharaoh is a stronghold. And though they were delivered from the bondage of Pharaoh, that stronghold was still there. And they still decided, let's choose a captain that will take us back to Egypt. Stronghold. But the Bible says, we have a weapon. And that weapon is mighty to God, to the pulling down of stronghold. I pray for someone, every stronghold that want to stand against your progress, they are destroyed in the name of Jesus. Amen. I said they are destroyed in the name of Jesus. Amen. And much more importantly, we have the promise of victory. Victory is guaranteed. In Christ Jesus, victory is assured. Victory is promised. But we need to understand what are those weapons that are available for us? And that's what we have been going to be talking about. That's what will be our focus. The first weapon that I want to mention is what I will refer to as the name of Jesus. Amen. Can you call that name? Jesus. The name of Jesus. In Philippians chapter 2 from verse 9. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 9. God had highly exalt him, talking about our Lord Jesus, and giving him a name that is what? Above every name. Amen. Look at verse 10. That name is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every name should bow. Of things where? In heaven, on earth, under the earth. Tell your neighbor again, you have a name. Have a name. It, is it is the name of Jesus. We have a name as a weapon. 
That's why the scripture says in John 16, 24. John 16, 24. It says, Eater too, have you asked nothing in my name? When you have the name of Jesus, then why are we afraid? Why are we troubled? Whatsoever you ask in that name, you will do what? You will receive. In the name of Jesus, we have victory, brethren. The weapons of our warfare. I said the first weapon is the name of Jesus. When you are a child of God, when you are a believer, brethren, that name is important. That name is powerful. That name is potent. We still remember the, the story of the seven sons of Skiphas. Amen. They want to do deliverance. Praise God. We're children of, you know, uh, sons of the prophet or children of pastors, and they want to do deliverance. And the demon asks them, in whose name, in whose authority? Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. Who are you? When you have the name of Jesus with you, I want you to know that there is no need for you to be afraid of the battles of life. Praise the Lord. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. To what? To the pulling down of strongholds. The name of Jesus. It's a weapon. The name, the name of Jesus is greater and higher than our name. Here is not an ordinary name. It's a name that's full of power and at the mention of the name of oh, sickness departs. Demons tremble. Demons tremble at the sound of your name. It is not an ordinary name. It's a name that's full of power and praise. Please tell your neighbor again, you have the name of Jesus. There's no need for you to be afraid. There's no need for you to be afraid. Praise the Lord. The second weapon, because we're going to use this weapon before we close today. Is the weapon of the word of God. The weapon of the word. Brethren, you remember our Lord Jesus Christ during his temptation by the devil. Luke chapter 4 from verse 1 down to verse 13. Luke chapter 4. Jesus continuously used that weapon of the word. He told the devil, it is written. The word of God is a weapon, brethren. But let me now put it in context. It is the word that you know that you have in you that you can use. You can't give what you don't have. And that's why, church, today I want to beseech us by the mercies of God. Be a student of the word. Be a student of the word. Jesus answered in verse 4. Jesus answered the devil, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by what? How many words? Every word of God. And so do you have the word in you? Because when you have the word in you, I always say this, the word will bow at your feet. The weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. The word of God. In John chapter 15, verse 7. John chapter 15, verse 7. Every 
one of us, knowing fully well that we have the what. And Jesus now instructed us here, if you abide in me, if you stay in me, and my word is in you, what will happen? You will ask me what you want, and it shall be done unto you. The word of God is a weapon. Every one of us, let's change our mentality. Whatever challenges you have faced, please try the weapon of the word. The devil doesn't, it's not as if he doesn't know the word. In fact, he quoted the word to Jesus. And you now think the devil will listen to your own word? No, use the weapon of the word. It is written, I am the head and not the tail. I am going to always be above and never be need. I shall not die, but I will live. To do what? To fulfill the mandate, the plan, the counsel, the will of heaven for my life. It is written, everywhere the soul of my wish shall step into, I will possess. Brethren, use the weapon of the world. We have a weapon. And it's an effective weapon. The weapons of our warfare. Number one, I said what? The name, the name of Jesus. Call that name again, Jesus. Number two, is the weapon of the word. The word of God. Number three, is what I would refer to as the weapon of the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Below, we have an high priest that was tempted just like you and I, but he shed his blood on the cross of Calvary. And the Bible says, if we confess our sins, he is a righteous God to forgive us all our sins. And the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. The blood of Jesus always cleanses us from all our sin. And so when you are now cleansed, you have a right standing to come before God and invoke the blood of Jesus. And that's why the scripture tells us in Revelation 12, uh, 13, that they overcame. By what? By the blood of the Lamb. We plead the blood. The blood of Jesus, we plead in the blood, the blood of, we plead, we plead the blood, the blood of Jesus. I pray for someone you will overcome today. By the blood of Jesus. Because that blood will wipe away every of your shame. I said that blood will wipe away every of your sorrow. In the name of Jesus. The weapon of the blood of Jesus. It is the blood of the New Testament. It is not the blood of goats or bulls anymore. It is the blood that is not speaking vengeance. It is not the blood that is speaking against your destiny, but it's the blood that is speaking favor, that is speaking healing, that is speaking grace, that is speaking lifting. Use the weapon of the blood of Jesus. When I see the blood, when I see the blood, the mark of the blood of Jesus will be upon your home, yes. upon your household, yes. upon your family, yes. in this season, in the name of Jesus. Yes. No corona will locate you. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. The weapons of our warfare. Number one, the name. Number two. Number three. The blood of Jesus. Number four, it's what I will refer to as prayer. Amen. The weapon of prayer. Now, brethren, we are commanded to always pray 
and not to faint. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. Amen. We are commanded to always what? Men ought always to pray and not to faint. The scripture says, pray without what? Without rest. Now, why do we have to pray? When you pray, when you call on God, there is a story of the man called Jabesh in First uh, Chronicles chapter 4 from verse 9. First Chronicles chapter 4. The man called Jabesh was in a very difficult scenario. He was given back to, I don't know why, maybe in a period of agony or distress. And his mother called him sorrow. But Bible says Jabesh prayed. He called on God. He was more honorable than his brethren. Because he was born in sorrow. And they called on the God of Israel. He simply prayed. And look at this prayer. Oh, that thou will bless me indeed. Enlarge my coast. That your hand will be with me and you will keep me from evil. That your hand may not grieve me. And the Bible says God granted him that which he requested. Praise the Lord. Amen. Brethren, you must pray. Some of us know how to talk, but we don't know how to pray. Some of us know how to complain, just like the children of Israel. They have A plus in murmuring and complaining. I don't want you to be like that. There's this song that says, when I call on Jesus, all things are possible. When I call on Jesus, all things are possible. I can mount up wings like ego and so. And when I call on Jesus, mountains will fall. When you call on Jesus, valley will give way. When you call on Jesus, Red Sea will give way. Don't let's be part of the group of Christians that know about prayer, that talk about prayer, but are not praying. The weapons of our warfare. Praise the Lord. Jabesh called on the God of Israel. And God changed his story. The Lord will change someone's story today. We're talking about the weapons of our warfare. Now, we know the promise of victory is what? It's guaranteed. Correct? But you also need to know what are those weapons at your disposal. Number one, the name of Jesus. Number two, the word of God. The word is a light unto my feet and an up unto my path. It is the word that the devil does not have a choice. He may not respond to your own word, but at the word of the Lord, the devil doesn't have a choice. Number three, the blood of Jesus. Number four, Amen. pray without ceasing. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Number five is what I would refer to as the power of your testimony. In that Revelation 12, 13 that we read earlier, and they overcame him by what? And the word of their testimony. Most of us usually forget very quickly about what God has done for us, and we focus on what he has not done. But when you praise him for what he has done, when you do what? When you praise him. When you remind him of all his goodness. That's why the psalmist, I, I, I love him. Amen. In Psalm 103, verse 2, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. All the things that God, all the victory that God has given you before. Do you think he can't give you another one? He's more than able. He says, my word will not come back to me void. But that word will accomplish, will fulfill everything that I have said concerning you. That's the word of the Lord for someone. The weapons of our warfare. Number five, I say, is what? Is the word of our testimony. 
You need to challenge the devil and let the devil know, I am not your candidate. That's why God has helped me. It's impossible for me at this point to go back. Because God has done so much for me, I cannot tell it all. And so he does not, you see, when Job declared, he said, even this God, even if he slays me, yet I will do what? I will trust in him because I know what he has done for me before. When you testify continually of the goodness of the Lord, the Lord can never forget his own. He says, though a mother may forget, abandon, ignore the child of their suckling, yet I, the Lord, will not forget you. The weapons of our warfare. Let's have two more and then we'll stop. Number six. What's number one? Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. And number six is something that we've talked about before earlier this year. And it's what I will refer to as the weapon of praise. Amen. The weapon of praise. We remember there was a Sunday we talked about praise until something happens. Praise always silences the devil. Praise always silences the enemy. Praise the Lord. In Psalm 22, verse 3, the Bible says God dwells, lives, inhabits the praises of his people. Praise is a weapon. If you have prayed about something, you have fasted, you have done all, and nothing is happening. Try the weapon of praise. We remember the story of uh, King Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, talking about the enemy coming against him. And he looked at the number of this enemy. He knew it does not matter my own strength or power or my ability. I don't even have the same number of army to go and face this enemy. But he did something. He appointed singers. And they began to praise the name of the Lord. They began to praise the name of the Lord. And while they were praising the name of the Lord, praising God in the beauty of his holiness, the scripture says God sent ambushment against the enemy. And they took each other's word and began to do what? Kill each other. Amen. When you praise God, victory is guaranteed. When you praise God, victory is what? They were praising God. And the same enemy that wants to come and kill them start attacking each other. Weapons of our warfare are not canal. Listen, brethren, let me repeat it again. It is not that brother or that sister or that old woman. They are not your enemy. Behind every evil, there is a spirit. It is the spirit that you need to come against. Praise God. You see, behind any form of disobedience, there is a spirit. It is that spirit that you need to come against. The weapons of praise. God dwells in the praises of his people. If you have not tried praise, please, I want you to continue to praise him until something happens. Uh, uh, Psalm 8 verse 2. Psalm 8 verse 2. The, the Bible says, out of the mouth of babes and suckling, God has ordained strength. Now look at what the scripture now says. It said, because of your enemy, that you might steal the enemy and the avenger, that you might put them to shame, that you can, by your praise, through your praise, you will do what to your enemy? You will silence them out of the mouth of babes and suckling. Praise the Lord. I'm here to tell someone, Your victory does not depend on your ability, on your effort, on your wisdom. But the Lord says the battle is mine. 
and I will fight your battle. I will fight your battle. Let me give us one more and then we'll stop. It's the weapon that I will call the power of the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit. Brethren, we are commanded at Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18. We are commanded to always be filled with the Holy Ghost. To always be filled with the Holy Ghost. Every Christian, every believer, you must be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because if you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, you cannot contend. L let's go back to, you know, talking about the weapons of our warfare. Amen. In Ephesians, he now listed all those weapons. Talking about uh, all the armor, we should put on the whole armor of God. If you look at all those armor, they are all defensive uh, weapons. Breastplate, shut your feet with the preparation of the gospel, helmet of salvation, amen. But it says there is one that is the sword of the Spirit. Praise God. Which is the word of God. You know that's the only offensive weapon. All the other ones are defensive. The breastplate of righteousness. Helmet of salvation. But when it comes to the battle... You can only fight the battle of life through the help of the Holy Spirit. Not the weapon, not all the armory that you have. In the book of Acts chapter 2, there's a story there. Acts chapter 2. I, Acts chapter 2. Uh, uh, sorry, Acts chapter 13, verse 2. That's the story there of Paul and Barnabas. The Bible says, as the disciples prayed and ministered to the Lord, what happened? The Holy Ghost said, the Holy Ghost spoke, separate to me Paul and Barnabas for the work that I've called them. And if you go down to verse 6, they were separated by God. And no sooner that they left, they found a false prophet who has been duping people by the name, by Jesus. Amen. Verse 7. When they encountered this man, verse 7, when they encountered this man, something happened. There is a deputy who wants to hear the word of the Lord. He called for Saul and Barnabas in order to hear the word of God. But this man, in verse 8, we stood him. Praise God. And something rose up. But Elima the sorcerer, for so is the interpretation of his name. We stood in seeking to turn away the deputy from faith. But look at verse 9. Something rose up in Paul. Verse 9. Then Saul, who is also called, filled with what? With the Holy Ghost. He set his eyes on the man. And he simply, being filled with it, he was grieved. And he declared, you are going to be blind. And what happened? Immediately, the man became blind. The weapons of our warfare are not what? Cana, but mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. Let's rise up. Let's stop here. Let's rise up. The weapons of our warfare, brethren, they are not just there for fun. You don't see military men going to warfare, having all this weapon as a sign as a show. It's the show of force. When you see all the armory that they have, you will know that, yes, you can't mess with this one. But let me tell you, as Christians, as believers, you have the same weapon that can bring down a whole nation. How many of us remember? Just one man who sat on Mount Carmel, and he says, if I be a man of God, let fire come down and devour you this and your 50. Amen. Was he carrying gun? Was he carrying any weapon? But he has the weapon of warfare that are not carnal. We have the promise of victory. And brethren, I'm going to give you 30 seconds to pray. Two things we're going to do. Number one, if you have not given your life to Christ, you can't even use this weapon. It will not work for you. You remember the story of those seven sons of Skiphas. But if you have given your life to Christ, then your prayer would be that God help me in the battle of life. I have the weapon. 
I am enlightened now. I am aware of the weapons available. Help me in the journey of life. The Bible has assured you and I that we are more than conqueror. Romans 8, uh, 37. We are more than conqueror. You and I, through Christ Jesus that love us, begin to pray and talk to the Lord. In the journey of life, give me victory over every challenges, over every issues, over every wall of Jericho, give me victory. But if you have not given your life to Christ, your prayer will be, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Save my soul. I am more than conqueror, and I want to live like that. Come into my life and save my soul. Talk to the Lord. I have no one else to go to. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. It is not that your neighbor. It is not that old woman. It is the adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion. is running around looking for who to destroy. Destinies to terminate. Oh, but you have the weapon. The name of Jesus. At the mention of that name, begin to command every of your mountains to depart. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Father, I just want to thank you, Lord, this morning for reminding us again of those weapons that are available at our disposal. The name of Jesus. Your word. The blood of Jesus. A testimony. Thank you, Father Lord. Because in the journey of life, you said you will not leave us nor forsake us. I'm praying for each and every of your children. As many, Lord, who don't know how they are going to overcome, the Father, you will be with them. Yeah. In the journey of life, you will give them victory. Yeah. The race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strong. But because we have you as the Lord of hosts, fight our battle. Yeah. In every ramification, fight our battle yeah. and give us victory. Total victory. Victory over sickness. Victory over cancer. Over tyrant. Every form of unfruitfulness. Give us victory in our land. Over this virus. Give us victory. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father Lord. Blessed be thy name. In Jesus' name, we are praying. And amen.